Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we are bringing you another Mod Spotlight video on Rome Total War Remastered. And today we are bringing you Kersey's Imperator map. I believe on the Steam Workshop it's called Imperator map for vanilla. Now, I've had a few of you comment on how hard RAS is and how difficult the economy is. And if that's you, then this might be the solution for you. You can enjoy the amazing new map, sort of RAS type map with a vanilla setting and a vanilla gameplay mechanics because all the mechanics in this mod guys are all vanilla all the same factions no more factions added in as you can see and um the gameplay is very much vanilla but it's on this huge new map i think there's 871 regions on this guys so without further ado let us get into the map and i'm going to show you the starting location of all the uh, different factions as well as the new regions of this glorious huge uh, new map second only to the ras map ris map at the minute and uh, i will see you in a second guys here we are guys, here is Kersey's map. Now, it is huge as you can see, 871 regions. And if we zoom in, you can see it's all the vanilla factions with a few different additions to each nation, as you can see. Now, it is not just simply the RAS map, as you can really tell. Um, and there's a few um, big changes kind of to the map that we want to go through right now. Obviously, India is, in in is included. The RAS map comes up to about here. Um, and um, in terms of regions, guys, there's a, there's a few regions that have been reduced in terms of settlements in order to add some more settlements elsewhere. Um, as we can see, if we look at... Rome and Italia, there's actually been a large reduction in the amount in Italia and Greece and Anatolia in order to add probably more of the uh, factions down here, more of the settlements down here, and add all these ones in India and also a load of them up here in the far northeast, sort of central Asia up into uh, modern day Russia. Uh, you can see it's quite a bit different, really. Uh, a lot of fact, a lot more settlements on um, Britain as well, as you can see. Some more on Scandinavia, and slightly less in the Central European region and Spain. So it's it's a bit different in terms of the map composition, especially Rome and Greece, as you can see. A lot less settlements here, I would say, I believe, than um, on. RAS map so a very different feel to the map including all of India which is huge but without further ado guys let's get into the map I'm going to show you some of these regions that have a lot more settlements uh, than the others we can see Britain here it's got a lot of settlements in it lots of uh, garrisons for the rebels as well as you can see now let's come down to Italia and you can see a lot less settlements than the RAS map um, but there's a huge amount of settlements down here in the desert, which really isn't the case on the RAS map, I believe, still. Uh, not a huge amount down there. And you can see down the Indus Valley, there's a lot less down here than there was uh, on the RAS map. Uh, sorry, RIS. I keep saying RAS. <laughs> RIS map. Uh, a few more in Arabia, but look at India. Here we are, guys. So populated with settlements. Look at that, Tagara, uh, Raichur, down all the way to Sri Lanka, down here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I do uh, I do really like the addition of India there. Very nice to see indeed. Of course, no uh, factions on there just yet. But even up here in sort of the far northeast of the map, we have a load of settlements. Pretty close together as well, which on RAS you don't have. So you kind of uh, trade... Uh, sort of strength and more uh, settlements in these regions like Anatolia, Greece and Italia for more sort of out of the way regions. And, it, and that's up to you whether you prefer that or not, uh, of course. But first things first, let's go through the starting positions and we'll go through all the different factions. We have Britannia here. Obviously, they're all the vanilla factions, so you've all seen these before. Uh, but... They, of course, have a different starting position on this map. We have Britannia with three starting settlements. Uh, Samarobriva, Prasutagus, 
And uh, Barry Vendos. What's this down here? That's Veramalunium. Kaliva. Neova Margis Reginorum. Uh, Corinion. Yeah, cool. So the Britons have a pretty nice starting position. Not near anyone. They can take all of Britain by themselves in Ireland and not really get challenged. So that's quite cool. That's good to see. You're going to have a pretty easy time as the Britons, I would say. Then over here we have the Suebi. Kind of split up. Probably likely to represent different tribes. We have, uh, sorry, not the Suebi, the Germanians. Uh, you have two Germanian regions there. One over here. Just split by one region, however. So you should be fine taking that one region. And they also have a region up in the north of Denmark. So primed to take all these Scandinavian regions, if you so wish. It'll be a long journey, as you can see. It's a long way to a lot of these regions, so I'd recommend ships. Uh, but apart from that, a lot of uh, a lot of ability to go and take regions. There's even one on uh, Gotland over there, which is pretty cool. I do like that indeed. There's even ones up here in uh, Finland. So pretty nice to see. Very nice to see. There's another one. Cool. So that's the Suebi. Now we go on to the Gauls, and they actually are probably the most spread out of all the nations. Um, where are you, Gaul? There you are. There you are. Couldn't see them for the time being. So they start with a couple of uh, settlements in these sort of southern Germanian lands. I mean, I guess they're Celtic lands for the Gauls, but southern Germanian lands um, over here spread out, but... Uh, probably one settlement to sort of uh, get this uh, region together. And it does look like you have enough troops to do so. So I'd probably recommend taking that one if you want to put your nations together. The Gauls also have a region down here in the Balkans as well, stood by itself. Uh, not too close to too many enemies. Um, however, you probably will come into contact with the Thracians or the Antigonids, the Macedonians, quite soon. So this one might be a bit of a harder challenge to start with. Um, and do they have any on Anatolia? I don't believe so. We'll zoom in. Uh, yes, they do. They have Lutarius. Uh, sorry, Lysomachia over here, led by Lutarius. So the Galatians are represented here as well, but still within the Gallic uh, settlements. And another one here. So very likely that you're going to be at war with Thrace early on. And I'd recommend taking them out if you are going to play as the Gauls. Uh, so that you have a bit more of a buffer between you and the Macedonians, for example, and the Seleucids. Uh, not something you want to be taking on early on, the Seleucids. Definitely not. Uh, but they also have these northern Italian provinces over here, which is awesome to see. These two, we have Felsina and uh, Mediolanum. Uh, so, two settlements in Italy. So, again, going to be hard because you're going to be coming up against the Greek cities or the Romans quite early on. Um, they, the heartland of the Gauls uh, remains in Gaul, <laughs> as you would expect. And you have four regions here in Gaul, which is pretty good. So, this is going to be your sort of hub for expansion. And I would recommend using this as your hub for expansion. I'd really actually recommend trying to join up with Mediolanum here so that you don't need to go through rebel territories to get there in future. Um, and probably trying to join up down here as well through the Alps, trying to join up this territory first before you go north because the northern one's only at risk from Br Britannia. And I don't think the AI is going to be that aggressive that they take a load of these settlements early on. So I think you'll be fine for time. Just try and uh, match up your territories over here. If you can then go northeast up towards your territories in the northeast, then fair play. That's really good. But I think it'll be pretty difficult to do that all so quickly. They also have one settlement in Iberia, as we can see. So quite cool. Another one for expansion. But that might be taken by Spain pretty early on. Now, moving on to Spain, they have uh, some settlements in Iberia and they're all spread out. So it's going to be a difficult start for you. You have uh, um, Luco over here, Dertosa, should I say. You have this one next to Carthage, uh, Matagenus. You have Caraunios, and you have Viraathus. Um, yeah, pretty cool. So they're all spread out, so it's going to be difficult. Again, what I'd recommend is trying to 
join up your territory. This one to this one's going to be difficult to do so. So maybe just expand with what you have there. But these two, try and take these three. And you're going to have a nice little hub there. You don't need to worry about a lot of these on the edges. Because they're not going to get taken by anyone. Uh, maybe taking out that Gullock settlement early on would be a good option as well. And trying to avoid war with Carthage. Now let's move on to Carthage. And you can see they have their southern Iberian tip over here. They've also got the northern sort of Moroccan tip there. But there's actually a gap then up to Siga over here. And another gap up to Iol. Uh, before you get to the sort of uh, the homeland of Carthage, the uh, Carthaginian Tunisian land, uh, which is fantastic. Nice looking. A lot of cities over here. They're only start as a large town. Carthage starts as a minor city, which is great. And you've also got one region on Sicily. So go and take Sicily as quick as possible, as well as uh, three regions on Sardinia and one on Corsica, Illyria. So, uh, a pretty decent start for you as Carthage, a nice large empire. You have the Numidians nearby, and of course, you will have the Romans soon, and the Greek city-states. But go and take as much of Sicily, take Sardinia, destroy the Numidians before fighting the Romans, and try and match up your territory over here. As I say, these regions seem to have more uh, cities in them, potentially, than RAS. I'm not exactly sure. Um... So, taking a lot of this North African territory would be really good for your economy, strengthen you up uh, in order to go and then fight the Romans, of course, which is good. And speaking of the Romans, let's take a look at the Romans. So, we have uh, the uh, uh, Scipii that have Regium and Capua over here. Two regions. Everyone has two regions, of course, apart from the SPQR. SPQR, of course, have Rome and the... Uh, um, Bruti, I actually don't start with Taras uh, or Tarentum uh, or Croton. You've got to go fight the Greeks straight away for that. So you're going to be at war with the Greeks straight away as them. Now, as uh, the Scipii, you probably will be at war with the Greeks pretty quickly as well. But you're going to be at war with Carthage mainly. Then we have the Julii, which have an interesting two regions here. You have uh, Corfidium and Aretium. And you've got a lot of rebel settlements around, like we can see. And uh, Gauls in the north and Greeks in the east. So you're going to be at war with people straight away. But this region's really yours for the taking. And then I'd recommend probably going up towards Gaul. Take out those core territories so that you don't have problems with them later on. Don't let them get too strong. So the Romans in there. Uh, slightly less settlements than RAS. On Rome, as we can see, quite a lot less. And that's uh, represented by the amount of extra settlements in other places on the map. Now, of course, we've gone over Carthage, but the Numidians are here as well. They start with four settlements in the North African region. And there's plenty of settlements around you for expansion that aren't Carthaginian ones. But as you can see, Carthage doesn't actually start with a huge amount of armies in its Northern African settlements. So... Probably going after Carthage early on would be a good option before they build up their might. And taking Carthage as a minor city, a rich city, early on would really help you out. Now, let's move slightly eastwards. We'll go for another barbarian faction. And this is Dacia over here. We have Dacia in the sort of Dacian land in uh, Hungary. Uh, uh, Hungary, uh, mm, well, Southern, uh, Hungary back in the day, let's say. Probably more like Romania now. Uh, exactly. Probably about, yeah, probably about Romania. So, over here, you have three settlements all together. So, you're quite lucky, unlike some of the other <laughs> nations. Your settlements are all together. And you're just surrounded by pretty much rebel settlements, apart from the Gauls over here. Um... And East the Scythians. So you've got plenty of territory for expansion, of course, which is pretty good for you. And then uh, let's move across to the Scythians. Scythians actually start with pretty much the whole of Ukraine, I would say, apart from uh, Crimea. Uh, and you start in a pretty nice position as Scythia. In the north, you've got plenty of territory to expand to. The same in the east. This is a very rich region, guys, with your... Um, all down here, you can be building ports. And a very rich region in here in Armenia and Georgia. So, probably worth expanding east first before you go west and fight the Dacians into this rich land along the coast of the Black Sea. 
um, and seeing whether you can take all this lovely territory over here as well. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, but you do start next to the Greek city-states, the Bosporans, uh, the Bosporan Greeks. So you're going to have a bit of trouble fighting them because they have quite a few territories over here. So take those out first and you should be good to go. Now let's go across to Parthia. Parthia starts with quite a lot of land really. But only uh, one, two, three settlements as we can see. But Parthia is OP as hell as we know. What is this? This is just like wasteland I guess. Um... But Parthia is OP as hell, and in this mod, you are starting right next to the Seleucids, so you will be at war with them pretty early on. But they have a lot of territory over here that's pretty weak, undefended territory, so you should have no problem against them over here as well, and going into Bactria. But I would recommend building up your forces by taking quite a few of these sort of rebel settlements that all are all close together before moving north. Um, moving north into the much more sparsely populated settlements probably wouldn't be the option. I'd go east, take all these regions, and then go south and start taking all the Bactrian land of the Seleucids. Now let's have a look at the Seleucids. You go from all the way from Bactria up here, all the way down to the um, tip of Arabia across the sea, to Sind, um, to Hormuz, I guess, Hormuz and Sind, and you don't have anyone to your east, so... Taking India is up to you, but that is probably a great option because you can see the amount of settlements in India over here. There's so many, so many settlements. So you'll be making a fortune if you manage to take a lot of those off India. Also, Arabia is pretty much undefended. Uh, un it's just rebels. So you can take Arabia at your own leisure as well. Of course, you come up here, you're bordering Armenia. So you're going to be at war with them pretty early on, as well as Parthia and in the... West, you're going to be at war with the Ptolemies. As uh, as usual, I mean, it's it's not unlikely, is it? Uh, you're going to be at war with the Ptolemies pretty quickly, pretty early on. And you come all the way across to Greece. So uh, Lysimachia of the Gauls probably will need to go. But you can kind of take a lot of these settlements at your leisure and focus on the nation of Armenia and Parthia and the Ptolemies early on. Ptolemaic Egypt, and you should be good. Seleucids, of course, have a massive empire. So while we're here, let's look at Armenia. A nice core amount of territory. Not very spread out at all, guys. So pretty nice to take. And similar to the uh, Scythians, what I'd probably do, rather than going south into the Seleucids straight away, is shore up your territory in the north. Take these coastal regions, this whole region in Georgia here, and these coastal regions, and suddenly you'll be making a lot of money uh, trading with a lot of settlements. So that would be fantastic. And taking these ones in the east here as well, up to the Seleucid border, and then go south across the Seleucids and try and split them in half because they don't actually have that many settlements before they're split fully in half. These three, uh, four there. So if you took this region, you would split them fully in half and I don't think the AI would be able to cope. Um, next to these guys, we have the Pontics. Pontus, I don't want to play as Pontus, but they start with three regions um, together mainly, split only by Gangra. So go and take Gangra, shore up your positions here with the few rebel settlements around you, and then go fight the Seleucids and kick them out of Anatolia. We also have the Egyptians over here that have plenty of different regions, so they're quite spread out. We have the regions over here in Anatolia, southern Anatolia, Cyprus of course, and then all the way through Egypt, down the Nile, down to around Ax, uh, not quite an Axum, Axum's down here. So you've got plenty of options for expansion. You can start going down the Nile. I believe the Nile is navigable by ship. I could be wrong, but let me, um, I am playing as the Julii right now, right? Oh, we don't have a ship. Well, that's annoying. I wish I could show you. But I believe the Nile is navigable by ship. So you can come down here with a ship, take these places. Please, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, by the way. Um, and start taking all this rich region down here, the tip of Arabia. This area of Arabia here as well, sorry, the tip of Africa, the, uh, Straits of um, Oman, the tip of Arabia over here, with lots of regions actually in it. So plenty of wealth to be had, as well as fighting the Seleucids in the north. I'd probably avoid war with anyone else and just go for the Seleucids. Take their rich settlements, take Babylon, 
take all the riches from there. And of course, uh, you're going to be do pretty well as Egypt. Egypt's always a strong nation. So uh, we've covered off most people apart from the Greeks now. So let's look at the Greek regions. We have Macedon over here, which has quite a lot of territory all in Greece. All ready to be taken. A lot of rebel settlements here. So you should rush to take these rebel settlements all close to you early on. Try and avoid the Thracians and avoid war with the Greeks straight away. Um, and just take the rebel settlements because there's loads in here. Loads of them. So take those and you'll be strong enough to take on the Greeks. Then strong enough to take on the Romans pretty easy, pretty early on. Now the Greeks, they have a very interesting start. And one that I would imagine is one of the most difficult starts. Because they're pretty much spread everywhere. <laughs> so your capital, would it be Athens? No, it's not. It's not Sparta either. So where is the capital of Greece? Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, Pella is the capital of Macedon. So I wonder, where is the Greek capital? Is it Syracuse? No. Interesting. I'm not actually sure. Nossos, what about Rhodes? You'd think it would be Athens or uh, Sparta or something. But no, I do... Oh no, sorry, Sparta is the capital. That's fine. Uh, but you have a spread out amount of territory in here. So similar to the Macedonians, try and grab rebel territory early on as quick as possible. Especially up here in Apollonia. Because the, the Macedonians won't be quick enough to start taking these territories. So try and take all these rich settlements in Greeks early on. Uh, try and take the uh, Kydonia off the rebels. And maybe even a couple of these little islands out here as well. You also have Kyrene across here. Four regions here. That's probably going to put you at war with Egypt. So if that does, go and fight Egypt. But if it doesn't, take these rebel settlements before the Carthaginians take them. So and take some of these. Get a bit richer in this region. You also have Syracuse. So rushing for bits of Sicily would be good. You also have regions over here in um, Iberia. Now what, are, what you want to arse, of course... What you want to do uh, with these is pretty much, I would say, just defend. Don't spend too much of your time because it's too far away from your capital. You're going to have a load of corruption. It's probably not worth expanding too much over here. Maybe a little bit of expansion from Massalia. Maybe taking Nicaea Liguria or a couple of these little settlements. But apart from that, that's just going to put you at risk at war of, go uh, of going to war with the Gauls. You do have this Roman territory. You can potentially take... Kaiso, Elfenia, sorry, Ascalum. Uh, you can potentially take Ascalum um, with this garrison. But I think the Romans will be going for it pretty early on. Um, you, of course, have this northern Anatolian land, which is pretty much sandwiched in Pontus, so defend there. And you have a Bosporan territory that's actually worth quite a bit. So you can actually try and, try and uh, bring your territory together through, uh, through these settlements here. And you'd actually have quite a big power base up here to fight the Scythians. But always remember the Scythian horse archers are going to be deadly against you. So, so that's it guys. That is a rundown of the map, of the new map with the vanilla. So if you're finding RAS really hard, this might be the option for you, of course. Um, this might be the option for you. Because as vanilla goes, vanilla is pretty easy. You can play on very hard and steamroll everything. Um... Uh, so I'd say the Greeks pretty hard start, uh, but that's that's about it, guys. I, I really like this. It's a nice different option. It's a differently made map uh, in terms of different amounts of regions in certain areas, uh, like Anatolia, Greece, and Rome have a uh, in Italia have a lot less, but there's a lot more elsewhere, like in India, for example. Uh, so that's quite cool, and you get India as well, which is pretty cool. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. As always, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you again on the next video.